Chapter Five of the Albert Gate Mystery by Lewis Tracy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Carolyn. Chapter Five: A Startling Clue. Once clear of the Albert Gate mansion, the barrister was bound to confess to a sense of indefiniteness, a feeling of uncertainty which seldom characterized either his thoughts or his actions he admitted as much to his companion for brett was a man who would not consent to pose under any circumstances it is quite true he explained that our first duty must be to find mr talbot and it is still more certain that we will be able to accomplish that part of our task but there are elements in this inquiry which baffle me at present and what are they sir said the detective i fail to see why mr talbot was dragged into the matter at all on the straightforward assumption that turks were engaged in the pleasant occupation of taking other turks lives an assumption to which by the way i attach no great amount of credence why did they not allow mr talbot to go quietly to his own home it was not that they feared more speedy discovery of their crime the hour was then late it was tolerably certain that he would make no move which might prove injurious to them until the next morning and then the whole affair was bound to be discovered by the police in the ordinary course of events i don't quite follow you sir said winter with a puzzled tone in his voice they had for the sake of quietude turned into the park and were now walking towards hyde park corner what do you mean by saying mr talbot would make no move in the matter until next morning oh i forgot said brett of course you don't know why the diamonds were stolen for the same reason that all other diamonds are stolen i suppose oh dear no laughed the barrister this is a political crime political said the amazed policeman well we won't quarrel about words and as there are perhaps no politics in turkey we will call it dynastic or any other loud-voiced adjective which serves to take it out of the category of simple felony why i cannot at this moment tell you but you may be perfectly certain that the disappearance of those diamonds from the custody of mehmet ali pasha will not cause the sultan to sleep any more soundly what beats me mr brett said the detective viciously prodding the gravel path with his stick is how you ferret out these queer facts fancies some people would call them as i used to do until i knew you better in this case it is simple enough by mere chance i happened to read this morning that there had been some little domestic squabble in the royal circles at constantinople i don't know whether you are acquainted with turkish history mr winter but it is a well-recognized principle that any sultan is liable to die of diseases which are weird and painfully sudden for instance the last one is popularly supposed to have plunged a long sharp scissors into his jugular vein others drank coffee that disagreed with them or smoked cigarettes too highly perfumed in any case the invariable result of these eccentricities has been that a fresh sultan occupied the throne now don't forget that i am simply theorizing for i know no more of this business than you do at this moment but i still think that you will find some connection between my theory and that which has actually occurred at any rate i have said sufficient to prove to you the importance of not being too ready to make arrests i quite see that was the thoughtful rejoinder but you must not forget sir that we in scotland yard are bound by rules of procedure perhaps you will not mind my suggesting that a word from you to the foreign office might induce the authorities to communicate officially with the home department and then instructions could be issued to the police which would leave the matter a little more open than we are able to regard it under the existing conditions i will see to that said the barrister 
when does the inquest take place this evening at six it will be adjourned of course oh yes no evidence will be given beyond that necessary for purposes of identification and this can be supplied by the police themselves and an official from the turkish embassy very well you will mention to no one the theory i have just explained to you not if you wish it sir i do wish it at present which way are you going straight to the yard in that case i will accompany you a portion of the distance they had now reached hyde park corner and hailing a hansom brett told the driver to stop outside the carlton hotel the man whipped up his horse and drove in the direction of constitution hill evidently intending to avoid the congested traffic of piccadilly and take the longer but more pleasant route through the green park and the mall by the way said brett did the driver of the hansom which conveyed mr talbot and his companion from albert's gate on monday night tell you which road he followed yes said the detective he went this way brett rubbed his hands with a queer expression of thoughtful pleasure on his keen face ah he said i like that it is well to be on the scent he did not explain to his professional confrere that it was a positive stimulant to his abounding energy and highly strung nerves to find that he was actually following the path taken by the criminal whom he was pursuing the mere fact lent reality to the chase for a mile at any rate there could be no mistake though he might expect a check at the carlton arrived there brett alighted are you going to make any inquiries in the hotel sir said mr winter why should i said brett you have already ascertained from the management that no person even remotely resembling any of the parties concerned is staying at the hotel yes confound it i know i did cried the other but i never told you so that is all right laughed brett come and see me at my chambers this evening when the inquest is finished perhaps by that time we may be able to determine our plan of action once left to himself brett did not enter the hotel indeed he hardly glanced at that palatial structure having evidently dismissed it from his mind as being in no way connected with the tragedy he was investigating he made it an invariable rule in conducting inquiries of this nature to adopt the french method of reconstructing the incidents of a crime so far as such a course was possible in the absence of the persons concerned he reasoned that a very plausible explanation of the unexpected appearance of the three strangers in the albert gate mansion on monday night had been given to jack talbot this young gentleman it might be taken for granted had not been selected by the foreign office to carry to a successful issue such an important and delicate matter as that entrusted to him without some good grounds for the faith in his qualities exhibited by his superiors brett thought he could understand the brother's character and to the attributes from his favourable analysis of the sister and it was quite reasonable therefore to believe that talbot was a man not likely to be easily duped the principals in this crime were evidently well aware of the trust reposed in the assistant under secretary and they again would not underrate his intelligence hence there was a good cause for talbot to accept the explanations whatever they were given him during the conclave in the dining-room the effect of which in inspector sharp's words had been to puzzle the young englishman further there must have been a very potent inducement held out before talbot would consent to drive off with a stranger at such a late hour and when the cab was dismissed at the carlton the excuse given would certainly be quite feasible it must surely be this communed brett 
the man explained that he was a stranger in london that he lived quite close to the carlton hotel and that he found it inconvenient not only for the purpose of giving directions that would be understood but also for paying fares to direct the drivers of hired vehicles to go there and not to his own exact address which he had found by experience many of them did not recognize whilst his knowledge of the language was not ample enough to enable him to describe the locality more precisely it follows then in unerring sequence that talbot was conveyed to some place within a very short distance of the spot where i now stand he looked along pall mall up the haymarket and through cockspur street and he noted with some degree of curiosity that there were very few residential buildings in the neighbourhood clubs theatres big commercial establishments and insurance offices occupied the bulk of the available space it was a part of his theory that none of the other great hotels in this district could harbour the criminals otherwise there would have been no excuse to stop the hansom outside the carlton brett did not take long to make up his mind once he had decided upon a definite course he stood at the corner barely three minutes and then walked off through pall mall and down the steps near the duke of york's column into the horse guards parade intending to walk quietly to his victoria street flat a call at the foreign office procured him an official authorization from the under secretary to inquire into the circumstances of talbot's disappearance and a promise that the home office should be communicated with he desired to review the whole of the circumstances attending this strange mystery of modern life and the result of his reflections quickly became apparent when he reached his residence for in the first instance he dispatched a telegram and then made several notes in his private diary the telegram in due course produced an elderly pensioned police inspector a quiet reserved man whom the barrister had often employed he explained briefly the circumstances attending mr talbot's disappearance and added i want you to find out the names and if possible the business together with any other information you may happen to come across of every person who lives within a distance roughly speaking of two hundred yards from the carlton hotel the post office directory and your own observation will narrow down the inquiry considerably it is the unrecorded balance of inhabitants with whom i am particularly anxious to become more definitely acquainted the man saluted and withdrew brett imagined that he would now be left in undisputed enjoyment of a few hours rest before the earl of fairholme kept the appointment fixed for seven o'clock but in this he was mistaken smith brought in some tea which was refreshing after this walk for the engrossing nature of the morning's occupation caused him to forget his lunch a cigar and evening paper next claimed his attention but he had barely settled down to the perusal of a garbled account of events at albert gate when his man again entered announcing in mysterious tones the presence of mr winter smith's attitude towards the myrmidons of scotland yard who occasionally visited the barrister on business was peculiar he regarded them with suspicion tempered by wholesome awe and he now made known the arrival of the detective in such a manner as caused his master to laugh at him show him in smith he said cheerily he has not come to arrest me this time winter entered and a glance at his face brought brett quickly to his feet what is the matter he cried when the door had closed behind the servant you have received important news i should think i have replied the detective dropping into a seat i was just writing a report in the yard when i was sent for by the chief and you could have knocked me down with a feather when i heard the reason i suppose i am acting rightly in coming at once to tell you although in my flurry at the time i quite forgot to ask the chief's permission 
but as you are mixed up in the case at the request of the foreign office i thought you ought to learn what had happened well what is it cried brett impatient of the other's careful provisos simply this said the detective mr jack talbot bolted from london on tuesday in company with a lady they crossed over from dover to calais by the midday boat and went directly to paris mr talbot calmly booked rooms for himself and the girl in the grand hotel and had the nerves to write mr and mrs talbot one hundred and eighteen ulster gardens london w in the register and both of them disappeared forthwith but we will soon lay hands on the gentleman no fear i have somehow suspected mr brett that your notion of a political crime was all poppycock it is a good big brazen-faced steel is it said brett his face glistening with excitement at the intelligence so suddenly conveyed to him would you mind explaining to me how this precious information reached you there is no use sir in fighting against facts said the detective with dogged insistence this time you are dead wrong mr talbot was recognized at calais by a foreign office messenger returning from france seeing him with a lady and knowing that he was not married the messenger captain gautier by name did not speak to him especially as mr talbot seemed rather to avoid recognition captain gautier thought nothing of the matter until this morning when he visited the foreign office on duty and heard something of the affair he then saw the under-secretary the same gentleman who sent the earl of fairholme to you and told him what had happened the under-secretary could hardly refuse to believe such a credible witness so telegrams were dispatched to the embassy in paris and the police at dover from dover came the information that exactly such a couple as described by captain gautier had crossed to france on tuesday morning and a few hours later a wire from paris announced the discovery of the registered names at the grand hotel the paris telegram went on to say that the gentleman had told the manager his luggage was following on the gare du nord and that his wife and himself were going out for a half an hour but would return in time to dress for dinner when his traps arrived they were to be taken to his room no luggage ever came nor was either of the pair seen again but we will lay hands on them never fear brett took a hasty stride or two up and down the room so you think he burst forth at last that mr talbot has not only taken part in some vulgar intrigue with the woman but that he has also bolted with the sultan's diamonds sacrificing his whole career to a momentary impulse and imperilling his neck for the sake of a few gems which he cannot even convert into money why not it is not the first time in the history of the world that a man has made a fool of himself over a woman or even committed a murder in order to steal diamonds my dear winter do be reasonable where is the market for diamonds such as these are supposed to be you know even better than i do that the slightest attempt to dispose of them at any figure remotely approaching their value will lead to the immediate detection and arrest of the person rash enough to make the experiment don't you see man that the foreign officer and its messenger its under-secretary your commissioner and the embassy officials in paris have been completely and abjectly fooled fooled too in a particularly silly fashion by the needless registration of names at the hotel no i do not see it one cannot go against facts but this time the evidence looks so strong that i shall be mightily mistaken if mr talbot does not swing for his share in the matter anyhow i have done my duty in letting you know what has happened so i must be off to arrest somebody of course cried brett with an irritating laugh but mr winter was already hurrying down the stairs the momentary feeling of annoyance soon passed to be succeeded by profound pity for the household at one hundred and eighteen ulster gardens 
he well knew that once the police became convinced that a particular individual was responsible for the commission of a crime it required the eloquence of several counsel and the combined intelligence of a judge and jury at the old bailey to force them to change their opinion brett had never to his knowledge seen talbot yet he felt that this bright alert and trustworthy young official was innocent of the slightest voluntary complicity in a crime which must shock london when its extent became known the testimony of the foreign office messenger was of course staggering at first sight especially when backed up by the hurried investigations made at dover and paris but there must be an explanation of talbot's supposed journey and even assuming the most unfavourable view of his actions why on earth should he so ostentatiously parade himself and his companion at the bureau of the grand hotel there could be but one answer to this question he acted in this manner in order to make certain that his presence in paris should be known to the police at the first instant they endeavoured to trace him then who could the woman be the last thing that a clever criminal flying from outraged law would dream of doing would be to encumber himself with a young and probably good-looking companion of the opposite sex the more brett thought out the complexities of the affair the more excited he became and the longer and more rapid were his strides up and down the length of his spacious sitting-room this was his only outward sign of agitation when thinking deeply on an all-absorbing topic he could not remain still he felt obliged to cast away physical as well as mental restriction on the play of his imagination and he would at times pace back and forth during unrecorded hours in the solitude of his apartments finally awakening to a sense of his surroundings by reason of sheer exhaustion he was not destined to reach this ultimate stage on the present occasion with a preliminary calf for the discreet smith was well versed in his master's peculiarities his servant announced the appearance of the earl of fairholme brett looked at his watch and was caught in the act by his visitor yes i know we fixed on seven o'clock cried the impetuous young peer but i was simply dying to hear the result of your inquiries thus far and i ventured to call an hour earlier the barrister explained that he sought to learn the time as a matter of mere curiosity indeed he added your appearance at this juncture is particularly welcome i want to ask you many things concerning mr talbot fire away said fairholme i'm no good at spinning a yarn but i can answer questions like a prize-boy in a sunday school well in the first instance have you known him many years we were at school together at harrow then i entered the army whilst he had a university career my trustees made me give up the service when i succeeded to the estate and about the same time jack entered the foreign office that is three years ago we have seen each other constantly since and of course when i became engaged to his sister our friendship became if anything stronger nothing could be more admirably expressed do you know anything about his private affairs financially do you mean well yes to begin with he got a salary i suppose from the government but he has a private income of some thousands a year then he is not likely to be embarrassed for money most unlikely he is a particularly steady chap full of eagerness to follow a diplomatic career and that sort of thing why he would sooner read a blue book than the pink on if you were told that he had bolted with a nondescript young woman what would you say say vociferated fairholme springing up from the seat into which he had subsided i would tell the man who said so that he was a damned liar exactly of course you would 
yet here are all kinds of people foreign office officials policemen and hangers-on of the british embassy in paris ready to swear perhaps to prove if necessary that talbot and some smartly dressed female went to paris quite openly by the day service yesterday and even took care to announce ostentatiously their arrival in the french capital for a moment the two men faced each other silently the one amused by the news he was imparting the other staggered by its seeming absurdity then fairholm flung himself back into his chair look here mr brett he went on if jack himself stood there and told me that what you have said is true i would hardly believe it a note of agony came into his voice as he added do you know what this means to his sister my god man it will kill her it will do nothing of the sort cried brett surely you understand miss talbot better she will be the first to proclaim to the world what you and i believe namely that her brother is innocent no matter how black appearances may be i have no knowledge of him save what i have learned within the last few hours yet i stake my reputation on the certainty that he is in no way connected with this terrible occurrence save by compulsion it gives one renewed courage to hear you speak so confidently said the earl his face lighting with enthusiasm as he looked eagerly at the other whose earnestness had for an instant lifted the veil from features usually calm and impassive betraying the strength of character and masterful purpose that lay beneath the outward mask is there anything else i can tell you asked fairholm you are quite sure that his was a nature that could not stoop to a vulgar intrigue said brett remember that in this relation the finest natures are prone to err from long experience i have learned to place such slips in quite another category than mere lapses of criminality of course any man who knows the world must appreciate your reasons fully but from what i know of jack i am persuaded the thing is quite impossible even if it were otherwise he would never be so mad as to go off when he knew that something very unusual and important was about to occur with reference to a special mission for the successful conclusion of which he had been specially selected by the foreign office ah there you touch on the strange happenings of coincidence circumstantial evidence convicts many offenders but it has hanged many an innocent man before to-day i could tell you a very remarkable case in point once but smith appeared to announce dinner and brett not only insisted that his new acquaintance should dine heartily but also contrived to divert him from present anxieties by drawing upon the rich storehouse of his varied experiences the meal therefore passed pleasantly enough both men arranged to visit sir hubert fitzjames during the evening and decide on a definite course of action which would receive the approval of the authorities armed with a mandate from the foreign office brett could enter upon this task without fear of interference from officialdom nothing further could be done that night as the private inquiry agent could not possibly complete any portion of his house-to-house -house scrutiny in the vicinity of the carlton until the following morning at the earliest they smoked and chatted quietly until seven thirty p m when inspector winter again put in an appearance to announce that the coroner's jury had brought in a verdict of wilful murder by some two or more persons unknown the detective was somewhat quieter in manner now that the sensational turn of events in paris had assimilated with the other remarkable features of the crime moreover the presence of a peer of the realm had a subduing influence upon him and he had the good taste not to insist too strenuously that lord fairholme's prospective brother-in-law was not only an accessory to a foul murder but also a fugitive thief one new fact was established by the post-mortem examination of the victims 
considerable violence had been used to overcome the struggles of the servant hussein his neck was almost dislocated and there was a large bruise on his back which might have been caused by a knee of an assailant endeavouring to garrote him they were discussing this discovery and its possible significance when smith entered bearing a lady's visiting card which he silently handed to his master brett read the name inscribed thereon he merely said show the lady in then he returned to the earl of fairholme electrifying the letter by the words miss edith talbot is here an instant later miss talbot came into the room the three men knew that she brought momentous perchance direful intelligence she was deathly pale her eyes were unnaturally brilliant her mouth set in tense resolution mr brett she said after a single glance at her lover we have received a letter from my brother a letter from jack cried fairholme well i never did ejaculated mr winter but brett only said have you brought it with you miss talbot yes it is here my uncle who was too ill to accompany me thought you ought to see it at once and she handed a torn envelope to him he glanced at the postmark it was posted in paris last evening he said his cool utterance sending a thrill through the listeners is the address written by him he added oh yes it is undoubtedly from jack here was a woman moulded on the same inscrutable lines as the man whom she faced seldom indeed would either of these betray the feelings which agitated them then he took out the folded letter it contained but three lines and was undated my dear uncle and sister it ran i am in a position of some difficulty but i am quite safe personally ever yours jack mr winter was the first to recover his equanimity he could not control the note of triumph in his voice what do you think of it now mr brett the barrister ignored him save for a glance which seemed to express philosophical doubt as to whether mr winter's head contained brains or sawdust you are quite positive that both letter and envelope are in your brother's handwriting he said absolutely positive there can be no doubt about it chimed in fairholme to whom in response to a gesture brett had passed the damning document then this letter simplifies matters considerably said brett miss talbot looked at him unflinchingly as she uttered the next question do you mean that it serves to clear my brother from any suspicion most certainly i thank you for your words from the bottom of my heart somehow i knew you would say that will you please come and help to explain matters to my uncle harry you will come too will you not the sweet gentle voice with its sad mingling of hope and despair sounded so pathetic that the impetuous peer had some difficulty in restraining a wild impulse to clasp her to his heart then and there even mr winter was moved not to proclaim his disbelief i will see you in the morning sir he muttered brett nodded and the detective went out saying to himself as he reached the street nerve of course he has nerve it's in the family just look at that girl still it did require some grit to sign his name in the hotel register and then calmly sit down to write a letter telling his people not to worry about him i've known a few rum cases in my time but this one the remainder of mr winter's soliloquy was lost in the spasmodic excitement of boarding a passing omnibus for this latest item of news must be conveyed to the yard with all speed. End of chapter 5